It's March 5, 2021. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I want to talk about some low power computing options for off grid situations. In particular, what I'm talking about today is uh, perhaps an RV where you might be boondocking or a uh, boat where you might be anchored out and running off battery only. So, what are the computer options I'm talking about? So, what are the com low power computing options I wanted to talk about? Well, the first one is this. This is a Raspberry Pi 4B. This computer is available for anywhere from $35 to $75 without the case. This one happens to be in a case. Cases cost about $8. And uh, the this one is a four gigabyte model, and it costs $55 for the base computer. Now these computers are pretty basic. Uh, they don't come with any kind of hard drive. They don't come with a power supply, and uh, the case, as I said, is optional, and they also don't come with a mouse or keyboard. So those are all things you're gonna have to add to the system. Now, you can buy a complete Raspberry Pi 4B system with four gigabytes of RAM with a case, a power supply, a mouse and keyboard for about $120. And there are, of course, other options available. Now, what makes these computers different other than their price? They're very low power. This computer when it's running normally, draws about three watts. So in a 12 volt system, that's about a quarter of an amp. So it would use one fourth of an amp hour per hour. Uh, at full capacity, say you're processing a video that's really stressing out the computer, it'll use about six watts. That's gonna give you uh, about half an amp of power draw from a battery. Now, they actually use a little bit more than that if you use the standard power supply because it's a standard uh, plug-in to 110 volt uh, power supply. So it's gonna be about uh, five or six percent uh, more power than that. But still, typically for normal operation, you're gonna be running at about four to five watts, which is very, very low power consumption. And that's with a keyboard and a mouse plugged in. One other thing you're going to need with a Raspberry Pi like this uh, is some memory. Now these computers are designed to use a micro SD card like this one. I don't know if you can see it very well. They're pretty small. This is a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. It has the operating system for the computer on it and uh, it provides you with all of your uh, long-term memory. This is a, your equivalent to a hard drive. So that is uh, probably another eight or nine dollars to buy a, a 32 gig micro SD card like this one. That would be included in the $120 all up kit price that I mentioned. So these uh, little computers without a screen are going to cost you you know, in the $120 range with a micro SD card, which has the operating system preloaded on, on it. And all you have to do uh, to uh, start this computer up is plug the micro SD card into it, like that, connect a power supply, keyboard, mouse, and screen, and you're in business. Now the screen is uh, gonna be the big power draw with this, depending on what kind of screen you connect with it. If you want to go with, say, a laptop size screen, you can buy a portable, say, 15-inch uh, screen for about $120 that will run off a USB-C and uh, draw about 10 watts, which would bring you up to roughly 15 watts. Or you can buy something like this. This is a 24-inch monitor. It has built-in speakers. It draws about 20 watts 
uh, maximum when it's running. And this cost $109. So those are some options. But in any case, you're going to be about, oh, with a Raspberry Pi 4, about $225 to $230 for an all-up computer system that can do pretty much everything that your laptop could do and use less power. Even with a big monitor like this, we're only looking at about 25 watts uh, for normal operation. That's about 2 amps with a normal 12-volt uh, battery system. So about 2 amp hours, which means that if you had a 100 amp hour flooded lead acid battery as your power system, you could run for about 25 hours before you drew the battery down halfway. So that's one option. You're looking there at about $230 all up with a big screen like this or with a 15 uh, inch portable screen. The other option is a Raspberry Pi 400. This is the same computer I just showed you, but it comes inside this keyboard. So you don't have to buy a separate keyboard. If you buy what they call the Raspberry Pi 400 kit, this computer, which is a Raspberry Pi 4B with four gigabytes of RAM and a keyboard, comes with a mouse, a power supply, and the micro SD card with the operating system on it. So you can be all up with this one for $100 and you can uh, then add a screen and even with a big monitor like this 24 incher behind me, you can be all up for $210 with a computer that can do pretty much the normal things that your Windows or Mac laptop will do. It may not be as fast as some of your laptops, but it's cheap and it's very low power. This system draws just about the same power as the Raspberry Pi 4B. So what I'm going to do now is connect this to a power supply and to the screen, hook the mouse up, and show you how it works and some of the things you can do with it. Well, here I've connected the Raspberry Pi 400 up. I've attached the mouse, I've attached the monitor, and I've attached a power supply to it. And I've also done one other thing that I'll come back to. Now to turn it on, I just have to turn power on, and the system should boot up in a few seconds. Once the monitor, there we go, it's starting. And this, uh, in just a few more seconds, will boot up to its uh, run screen. Here we go, just about there. So there we go. That is the full boot up in real time. So it's pretty fast. And here's the run screen. Now the screen display that it comes with normally is quite different. Uh, this happens to be my cat, Gracie Grafer, uh, in an apple tree. Uh, I just scaled that picture and put it in there. Now, this system comes with a number of things. Uh, if you go up here to the upper left-hand corner, there's a little raspberry. You can click on that, and it gives you the options for the system. And I've got uh, an Office program, which is freeware, that includes all the normal things, a word processor, a, a spreadsheet, it's a database, etc. We also have internet. It comes with a version of the Google Chrome browser, which is called Chromium, which is a browser that's optimized for the Raspberry Pi computer. And it works just like any other web browser. You can just click on it there and it should load uh, fairly quickly. There it is. And let's go to an exciting YouTube channel just to illustrate something about it. And basically, we're not waiting for the computer. We're waiting for the internet connection. Right now, I have the system connected to the internet via Wi-Fi, which is built into the computer. You could also plug in an Ethernet cable. 
and let's uh, let's take a look at a video. Here's a a video. I'll take it full screen. And I'm probably going to get an ad once it loads this video. Yeah, that's running a 1080p video right now, and it has no trouble at all doing that. Well, we'll stop that. No point in playing with that. The web browser works just like any other web browser, so this is a good system for doing internet. Uh, it also has a lot of free software. For example, I have loaded on here a completely free video processing program, which I can use to uh, process videos and put them up on YouTube. In fact, the video you were just looking at was processed on this computer. And it, it's not super fast in terms of rendering, but it does work and it has all the functionality and it costs nothing. And it was very easy to install, just a very simple command. And it was installed downloaded over the internet. So these little computers can do pretty much everything that a bigger computer that uses more power would do, and they're really cheap. And that was the point I wanted to make. As I said, this system, as it's running right now, draws approximately uh, 25 watts and or if I was running off a battery, two amp hours for a 12 volt battery. And if I had a less power intensive monitor, say a 15 inch portable monitor, I'd be down to about 15 watts, which would be one and a quarter amp hours. And that would allow me to run for around 40 hours off of a charge on a 100 amp hour lead acid battery. So that's uh, pretty good. And it also means that it, this system, for all that you would use it in a day, unless you uh, were a real computer crazy person and used it 24 hours a day, but if you used it a normal amount of time, you could easily recharge your battery from all of the power consumption of this computer in a typical day's use with a 100 watt solar panel. So this kind of small computer has several advantages. It's cheap, it's easy to set up, and it has the full capabilities of a much more expensive computer, and it uses very little power. So it's a good choice, in my opinion, for uh, a boondocking or off-grid situation. Another factor with it is that I said initially that these computers use this little micro SD card instead of a hard drive. This one's a 32 gigabyte system, but that isn't a huge amount of memory. The operating system and all the programs on this are about four and a half gigabytes, maybe five. So I only have about 26 gigabytes left for everything else. If I was doing videos, I probably would want more memory than that. You can buy a bigger uh, SD card, up to whatever, 256 gigabytes or something, or you can buy something like this. This is a solid state drive. Uh, this particular drive is a 500 gigabyte model and it costs about $60. And this adapter to go from the drive to the computer costs $10. So $70 for a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. The advantage the solid state drive has over the micro SD card is that it is much faster, as much as 10 to 20 times faster than this. So data is going to go on and off that card much, much faster than it'll go on and off this little guy. 
And uh, with a 500 gigabyte drive, this has as much storage as my laptop. And I could, of course, run a much bigger drive if I wanted. So that's uh, an option. You can buy a smaller drive. You can buy a 250 gigabyte drive with the adapter uh, for in the neighborhood of $35 at the low end or up to about $40 for a much higher quality drive. But that is an option if you want to speed the system up and have more memory, but it will add a little bit to the price. Anyway, that's a quick demonstration of some of the things you can do with a Raspberry Pi. There are lots of other things you can do. For example, I can plug my microscope over here into this computer and take pictures or shoot video of what my microscope is doing, again, with free software that I can download directly from the internet. And the uh, Raspberry Pi 400 or Raspberry Pi 4B will do the job very handily for using very little power. Okay, that's all I wanted to say today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that uh, you'll get a notification of my, when my next video is up. Thanks again for watching.